folks, Manberg 12,000 here. Uh, figured I'd talk with you. I'm leaving LAX for uh, San Francisco Airport. And I wanted to talk to you on this video about uh, aborted takeoffs. I think that's a subject that's not talked about very often in the flight sim community, but it's very important in real life and in the simulator life. So let's talk about that for a moment. Let me switch to my cockpit here. Okay, here we are in the cockpit. Now, there's a... Uh, a couple of systems on the aircraft on the Boeing 767. Again, this is from Level D Simulations for Flight Simulator 2004. There's a couple of uh, systems that help the pilot abort takeoffs. One of these systems here is the uh, auto brake system. Now, the auto brakes are very important in that if you were to switch it to RTO, which stands for Reject Takeoff, the auto brake system will automatically apply maximum braking to the undercarriage in the event it detects the throttle being closed. Now, this only happens uh, over 80 knots, not below. So, if you uh, abort your takeoff below 80 knots, then the braking is up to you. Now, there is an interesting thing about this in that you might ask, well, why couldn't the pilot just press on the brakes if an emergency happened? Well, there is a key reason to this. One is uh, momentum here, okay? If you're going over 80 knots and you have an engine failure and uh, a number of uh, failures, red failures come up on the ICAS engine indicating crew learning system, you not only have to evaluate you know, the, the nature of the alert, uh, but you also have to stop the aircraft, apply your spoilers and uh, whatever else you need to do to maintain control of the aircraft on the runway. Mind you, the brakes are differential, so uh, your body might be moving to the left because of the differential thrust, so you might apply a little more braking pressure on one side, and therefore you might uh, send your passengers right back to the terminal very quickly. So the automatics will symmetrically apply the brakes, so you don't have to worry about that. But again, below 80 knots, the brakes are up to you. Now, why would the auto brakes not engage below 80 knots? Well, simple matter of momentum. Uh, intuitively speaking, uh, at 40 knots, if you were to board the, air, uh, the takeoff, maximum braking at 40 knots could be quite a jolt. So, uh, maximum braking is only effective at 80 knots and above. So, that's why you want to know when you're hitting the 80 knot mark on your takeoff. Okay, so, the spoilers will extend automatically when the pilot deems it safe to engage the thrust reversers. Uh, assuming there's no symmetrical problems with the aircraft, uh, the, the spoiler boards will um, deploy and will aid in the stopping effort uh, of the aircraft if it's flying above uh, 80 knots or so. So that's something that is linked to the uh, braking system in that uh, if you close the throttles and apply reverse thrust, those boards that you see there, those four, will automatically extend and uh, give you a helping hand. Let's get back into the cockpit here. Okay, so another thing here we have is the auto throttle system. Auto throttle uh, manages the aircraft's throttles or aircraft's engines uh, for most, if not all, of the flight, if you so choose. And uh, again, the uh, the automatics of an aircraft is not to accommodate a pilot's laziness. Uh, it's actually to increase airline and aircraft efficiency. So it's more cost effective. The side benefit is that you decrease pilot uh, fatigue. So it's a system that you want to use to get the most out of your airplane. Okay, so that's the automatics here. So we have the auto throttle. And the auto throttle on the MCP, mode control panel here, is armed by flipping up this AT arm switch. If it's off, your autopilot disengages or does not engage. And when it's on, it's, it arms or it uh, engages. For takeoff, we have an on arm. When the aircraft uh, is uh, on takeoff, what we'll do is we will press the Neeper button. What that does is it gives us maximum thrust. And it sets the engine in one to the maximum takeoff thrust setting automatically. Whereas before, you would have a flight officer do it, or an engineer would set the throttles. So this is done automatically. During takeoff, in regards to the auto throttle, there are a number of indications that show up on the PFD here. One would be called throttle hold. 
that is a mode that engages when takeoff thrust has been set and the aircraft has gotten closer to its flight regime. It allows the pilot to abort the takeoff manually if he so chooses. So basically what it is doing, it is, it is returning authority of the throttle back to the pilot. Granted, the pilot can override the auto throttle with a uh, little more strength on the throttles themselves. So, 80 knots is the reason why they call 80 knots on takeoff. It's uh, important in two ways. One is braking, manual braking, and the other is the increased rudder authority that comes with a speed above 80 knots. Okay, so now during takeoff, we stand our throttles up, <coughs> check our gauges, press kneeper, press our kneeper here. I'm actually pointing to my monitor instead of using my mouse, excuse me. And uh, we wait for the aircraft to spool up here, and we start our takeoff run. Okay, got my lights on here. Now we're going to throttle up and get onto the runway. Important thing to remember with engine failures on uh, uh, takeoff phase is that a couple of things happen here. When you have an engine failure during takeoff, the pilot naturally wants to pull the aircraft up and get it into the air. It's just a natural thing he wants to do. When what he should do is hold the aircraft on to the runway until VR, okay? Secondly, with the engine failures, uh, one important thing to remember, at least in the real world, uh, and good practice for the simulator world, is that when you experience a differential thrust condition during takeoff, you do not want to maintain course with the ailerons. If you were to apply ailerons during a one engine out takeoff, you'll notice the spoilers start to move. Now this is a dangerous situation to have at low speed. You do not want any type of spoiler activity happening at lower speeds in the air. So that's why it's important to use the rudders to maintain course during an engine failure. And let's demonstrate that here. And we'll demonstrate a, uh, a V1 cut as well. Okay, here we are on the runway. Let's stand our throttles up. Check our gauges. 60%. Okay, press Dnieper. Maximum takeoff thrust setting, automatically moving. Let's get on the runway here. We're under 80 knots, so we are in manual braking territory. Maintain runway direction with the rudders. And we're approaching 80 knots. Auto brake territory right now. Throttle hold. My hand's on the throttles now in case I want to abort. Okay, shut the throttles. And automatic braking is starting. I can deploy the spoilers if I choose to do so to help. And depending on the situation, I can just uh, disengage the auto brakes at about uh, 50 ground speed or so, so I don't come to a screeching halt. There we go. And do manual braking. Okay, so here we are again at the uh, runway. <clears throat> Let's uh, stand our throttles up, check engine gauges. Looks good. Release parking brake. Engage Dnieper. Okay, throttles are going up automatically. Let's check the runway. We're under 80 knots, so we're in manual braking territory. And we will reach 80 knots, which will be auto brake territory and auto throttle hold. Okay, so throttle hold, hands on throttle in case you want to abort. And we're going to have an engine cut out after VR or so. And we'll maintain runway alignment with the rudders. Okay, there's your engine out. That's the left engine. Okay, pull back. Looks good. Remember, rudders only. Looks good. Gear up. And maintain V2. Or above. But main V2 is the speed you want to have uh, for perfect uh, climb performance. And we can start retracting our flaps. Let's look at it from the outside and see what it looks like. Okay, so the engines are going to go off here pretty soon. The left engine, you'll see the rudder kick in. I'll maintain the uh, line with rudder only, no ailerons. Wait to VR, pull up, get that rudder going. Okay, you're going to be crabbing a little bit, but that's fine, get the gear up. And I'm afraid that'll do it for this video, folks. I just wanted to talk to you about the uh, board of takeoffs and uh, just send you a quick little chat here. And uh, look out for more videos. Ciao.